system. And by practicing, giving central importance in our daily life to observing the law of cause and effect as the single most important thing moment by moment, by doing that we develop renunciation. There is the chance for some momentary happiness. We are very attached to momentary happiness, but then we remember the teaching on the law of cause and effect, and we remember that if I do something to get this momentary happiness, maybe I have to lie to get it, maybe I have to steal to get it, or do something, certainly I at least have to follow my attachment. My, I have to follow my desire, and therefore, I create negative karma. It's a negative action, puts a negative imprint in my mind. In order to get this little moment of worldly happiness, I create the potential for suffering in the future. Practicing the law of cause and effect is the key to developing every quality on the path to liberation and enlightenment. So that is the, the fundamental refuge understanding the law of cause and effect, de uh, developing faith in it, putting a key e you know, emphasis to being mindful of the law of cause and effect in our daily life so that we can observe it. It's also, it's Lama Zubarimshe makes this joke, just mind ordinary mindfulness of, is not good enough. You know, now I am picking up the knife, now I am stabbing this person, now I am stabbing this person very carefully. That kind of mindfulness is not helpful. Real mindfulness has this moral connotation of knowing, being aware that why one is doing something that is either virtuous or non-virtuous. Knowing that this thing is going to produce suffering now and in the future, or this action of body, speech or mind is going to produce some happiness now and in the future. We need that kind of mindfulness. Mindfulness mixed with an understanding and faith in the law of cause and effect. And the stronger the faith, the stronger the energy to with, withhold from doing negative things, thinking negative things, saying negative things, and doing negative things. And also the more we understand the law of cause and effect, we develop a deeper understanding of what is negative, what is harmful, to ourselves and others. Right. So that that is the, the, the key teaching, the key practice. Washington DC in politics in a very fast-paced environment. When you're in Washington DC, part of your work and the, in politics um, is people lie and that's part of your business is to lie. In fact, you are encouraged to lie and you are um, you're rewarded for lying and bosses will come up to you um, after you've lied to somebody, a client or a customer or someone, and, you know, said, that was great, you know, it was great how you, how you did that deal, fantastic, you know, you got $5,000 from them, and great, you know. And so, and so we would tell lies all the time, and, and I never thought it was, and there was any problem. I thought that was how I was supposed to be. So then, um, in my late 20s, when I came in contact with the Buddhist teachings, in Nepal, um, and I heard the teachings on karma, and these teachings were, they were hard to listen to. I mean, they were teachings that, you know, if you lie, then you're going to create the cause for no one to ever believe you in the future. And if you steal, you will create a result that people will steal from you, and you will lose valuable things, things that you value. And, and, um, and there were all these teachings that, you know, if I did these bad things, then bad things were going to happen to me. And when you get angry at somebody, 
you're creating the cause for someone to get angry at you and yell at you. And I didn't like to get yelled at. I don't think anybody does. So, so um, I, left the, I left the teachings with um, what we call the Ten Non-Virtues and um, sometimes called the Ten Ethical Guidelines of, you know, not stealing, not killing, not creating sexual misconduct um, and things like that, not lying and gossiping. And, and um, I've been, I started to work with those. I started to just try one. You know, because lying in my work had been a big thing. You know, I was really used to that. So I got a new job when I came back to America, and I was trying to be really careful not to lie. And I did have some experiences um, in some workplaces where I didn't think people listened to me. And for two years, I very seriously went after the lying. I was very careful in my relationships not to lie. And I was very careful in, in work, in business conduct with people that I wouldn't lie. And um, after like two or three years, it, it, it start, something started to change. And I found people were listening and people did believe me. It started to really change my, my world. They say that sometimes when you change your ethical behavior by speaking the truth, by cultivating life and helping you know, to save lives and freeing animals and and um, being respectful in my relationships with people, particularly intimate relationships, and, and uh, you know, c cultivating harmony in them, and trying to practice um, taking care of my possessions and treating other possessions with respect, people, if I borrowed something. And all these things of, of right speech, you know, of speaking the truth, and really trying to use my speech meaningfully, not gossiping all the time, and not criticizing people and judging people, and and not kind of dividing people in speech, and, and trying to have positive thoughts about things. I noticed that um, things changed. When you wake up in the morning, you have two choices. You can have a good day, or you can have a bad day. And um, even when bad things happen to you, depending on your reaction to them, you know, you could say, a bad thing happened to me today, <coughs> but you know, I'm not going to get angry at my friend because um, they, you know, that's just going to create this situation of anger to come back at me. You know, when you start to understand it that way, then you, you stop reacting. Why did they do this to me? This is not fair. There's no, with karma, there's no more injustice. Things might look like it's not fair, but basically it's something you've created. So the nice thing with karma is it puts you at the controls. There isn't anybody doing it to you. You're not a victim. Um, you're basically in charge of what kind of seeds you'd like to plant from here on out. So by watching my activities, the activities really in my body, speech, and mind, um, I feel like that's going to create a good chance for me, you know, the next time around. For me, the Buddha's instructions were similar to that of a, of a business plan. You know, if your forecast, you know, if your plan, you know, it's not doesn't have a proper foundation, then all your forecasting is going to go off. It's just not going to succeed. I realized then, I better look at what are the problems I'm facing in, in the company, and then I better look at what seeds I've planted in the past, you know, because all my suffering has come from a cause. The major problem we had was inventory pilferage, stock pilferage and losses. And um, so, you know, every year, you know, merchandise, clothing, you know, people steal them from our warehouse, from our shops, and we don't know about it till the end of the year when we look and we say, oh my God, so many, so many goods are missing, you know. So then I realized by, by looking at the teachings that, yeah, by, by, yeah, through investigation, you know, I realized that the cause of that was stealing. Now you say, now how does stealing have to do with losing inventory? But, but then stealing can mean many things also, you know. And, and, I, and I realized that sometimes our company did not pay on time, you know. So by delaying payment could be considered also stealing. So when I realized that, I said to myself, this must change. So we had to renegotiate with our suppliers to get longer credit terms. And, and then honor those due dates that we said we would meet, you see. So that was, that was what we had to apply, that antidote, so that we could stop the cause of more further losses and further um, pilferage, you see. So something had to be done, we had to do it straight away. 
So this was the answer we thought we would have to do. The result of that since two years ago is that um, our inventory losses have come down. You see, so this really shows me that, you know, Buddha's teachings do work. The more that I see that happening, it really inspires me to study Dharma because that way, you know what, you can change your life. You know, I could change my life. You know, if I didn't like the causes of, I, if I didn't like what's going on, you know, Buddhism is kind. It, it allows you to change what, you know, so that you can create your own happiness. But you need to understand that you're creating your own suffering. And I, I needed to understand that I was creating my own suffering. Nobody was doing it to me. It was myself, my causes from the past. And, you'll see, and, and, and I could say that, well, you know, I don't think I did that. I don't think I did that. If my memory cannot even remember six months ago, then how can I remember all the bad deeds I've done 10 years ago, 20 years ago? I don't. But the, the point is, I've created this garden. It's got a lot of weeds, you know. So I have to spend my time weeding, purification, collecting merit, studying teachings and devoting myself to the Lama, all things that will create more happiness. And then by me being happy, then I can benefit sentient beings because they are happy to be working in the company. They're happy because they say, you know, things are going well and they will be rewarded too. So everybody benefits. <laughs>